welcome to the Whiskey and Wisdom Podcast. This is episode number five. I am Tyler Yall, and this is my co-host, Chris Callum. And this week, it is just Chris and I in the studio, and we want to give you a little bit more background on Chris's life. But before we jump into that, what are we sipping on today, Chris? <laughs> so our first sip this week um, definitely goes with my life. It's definitely bananas. Uh, we're <laughs> sipping on Howler Head, which I never heard of, which isn't surprising. Uh, but Tyler's heard of it before just because he, he like UFC, right? That's right. Yeah. Dana White, co-owner yeah. in there. So, so we're checking this out. This one is considered a Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey. Um, and we talked about it the other week that, but it's supposed to be aged for about two years in a traditional oak barrel and it has some natural banana flavors. So let's... Let's see what this tastes like. Cheers. Here we go. Cool. That's actually much better than I was expecting a banana whiskey to taste. Yeah. It reminds me of like banana chips. Like when you get the uh, plantain chips. Yeah. So it's really smooth. Definitely better than 99 bananas. That's what I had in my head. I was like, this is going to be bad. Yeah, it was much better. It's really easy to drink, actually. Yeah. We're drinking it straight. So it's um, if we can drink it like that, you know, it's pretty good. I mean, we got to try everything straight and then you can mix it up and do whatever you want to. Right. Yeah. We can play with it later. Yeah. That was good. But anyway, today, Chris is about you. So tell us about your background a little bit. Ooh. I'm, I'm not super special. <laughs> I grew up here in the port city, Wilmington, North Carolina. You don't hear about that too often. No, apparently not. I think it's a common thing, but every time I talk to somebody, they're like, I, I didn't know you were from here. It's <laughs> rarity. Rare. But yeah, no, I grew up here to school at the beautiful Ogden Elementary back when it was five brick buildings and now they've torn it all down and reconstructed it to make it look like everything else from the millennial age. Nice and gray. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But I went there, went to Noble um, and then Laney. So I went to school all on the north side of town. How many Uh, people when you say you went to Laney say something about Michael Jordan? Typically, I don't tell people that. <laughs> but no, ever, Laney is definitely, when I went to school there, it was a year that he had, MJ had donated some money. Mm-hmm. So they actually redid the floor in the basketball in the gym and put the Jumpman logo. Oh, nice. Like that was the center court was the Jumpman <laughs> logo. I was like, dang, that's actually kind of cool. That's so, pretty sweet. So yeah, because I played junior varsity basketball and then I decided I don't want to play basketball. And join the yearbook team. Why? Because I wanted a very easy five <laughs> on my GPA. <laughs> that was quite um, the change. Oh, totally different. But it was nice. It was it was a great way for me to work on my like creativity because I could see things in the real world. I'm like, you know, I could tweak this and make this look a little bit different. Right. And if you look at the yearbooks, the two that I worked on were very full of color. <laughs> like there was a lot of color splash throughout and it was kind of nice it was something different i thought about going to school for it and i in college did not do that whatsoever which i'm going to college for then well technically (laughs) i went to east carolina university right and i went to school to get a degree in german like that was literally what the title was was german did not even know that about you yeah um it's hilarious because i showed up in the like the advisor was like, Oh, Hey, you know, how many German classes have you had already? Like you should be in like year three. I said, Nope, never taken German in my life. <laughs> and she just looked and was like, seriously. <laughs> so you are going to be on the five-year track automatically. Wow. Yeah. So I did, the, did, um, some time there and I was like, this is not for me. Mm-hmm. I like you my, made it sound like jail too. So I get it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I like these, you, I have friends that I would go visit and I love seeing them. Sure. But school, I am a person who likes to learn on my own terms and going to school and sitting and be like, you have to sit in a class for an hour and a half, two hours just was not of interest to mm-hmm. me. Cause even in normal school, like elementary, middle high school, like I remember classes where my teacher would be like, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. I'm like, well, I'm reading a book. Why? I'm like, because I remembered all the stuff you said. So I could pass this test. Right. I just don't want to pay attention any longer. <laughs> I even, I get, 
legit got kicked out of a class because my oh, yeah. teacher, the funniest thing, he literally said, this was a math class. So my senior year, he was like, hey, what are you doing right now? I'm like, hey, you told me my homework is due in two weeks and we're doing a review. I haven't done my homework, so I'm going to read a book. <laughs> he looked at me and said, do you want to be here? No. And I literally was asked, hey, go down here. We'll swap your courses. I was like, <laughs> I mean, so if that tells you anything, I've always been straightforward. Um, which has gotten me in trouble in life. It also got you onto this podcast. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, but it was nice being kind of straightforward and being like a, a decent human being got me a job working. I did two things. I did a stint at a movie theater for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I worked as an after school counselor, uh, which is kind of interesting because typically little kids, or younger people don't see men as right. like a lead role um, outside of their house. So it was kind of nice working with kids and like giving them like a, a decent example. Um, so I did that. Yeah, that's great. And I was like, you know, the National Guard sounds like an easy gig. <laughs> that was a. I was gonna say, were you right? No. <laughs> I mean, it was easier than some things I could have done. But sure. No, I had a friend who's like, hey. I can make you like get a bonus and you get 10 grand if you join right now. I said, sure. Yeah. And actually I made 20 grand because I got split bonus and I was, I said, sure. Nice. That was the longest 18 weeks of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about that, about kind of the experience oh, in the national gosh. guard, kind of like how you got into it, why you decided to do it and um, how long you did it for best worst case kind of what's going on. So I had a friend who worked with me at the after school program who was in the national guard already. Mm -hmm. And he, he, that was just interesting. Uh, but he was like, you know, it's just one week in a month, you know, maybe two weeks a year. You'll, mm -hmm. you'll be fine. Just sign up. And I'm like, I mean, my granddad did it. So I mean, yeah. this legacy, let's, let's do this up. And so I signed up and my recruiter gave me like the pretest. He's like, all right, here you go. So what were you thinking about doing for your, your job? And I said, you know, an MP like my grandpa. And he just looked at me like, are you serious kid? <laughs> because I took this test and I hadn't been in school in about two and a half years. Right. And on a pre-test I made like an 89. Yeah. I'm like, I haven't even looked at a computer. And I took the actual test and I made, I think like a 97. I was like, is Dang. it 95 or 97? Yeah. With no studying. And so they just thought I was stupid. For, and they're like, you decided to go for an MP route, which you don't need a high score for. Right. I said, yeah, I'll just follow my foot, my family footsteps. And it was interesting. I got to basic uh, in, what was it, fall of 09? Yeah. So I showed up literally like Labor Day weekend. Mm -hmm. And it it was just different. Because you go from doing whatever you want to, hanging out with your friends, late nights to, all right, you're waking up at 4.30, you have yeah. PT at 5, and bedtime was 8. <laughs> I was like, holy moly. And yeah, I, I mean, thinking 8 o'clock is late is crazy, but as an old man, I, th I think 8 o'clock is decent. <laughs> right. But back then, I was 20, turning 21. And I was so mad. I'm like, why am I going to sleep this early? Yeah. So like, I'm not a 70 year old man. What's going on? No. <laughs> but then you realize you still have to pull guard duty. even mm. though Nothing's going to happen. So it gets you ready for it. So waking up throughout the week in the middle of the night to pull hour long shifts. Um, it definitely breaks you down. And that's what it's supposed to do. It, right. It breaks you down as a person to listen to commands and use those commands to better protect and serve, which is kind of what the big right. thing is. And I totally took that heart. I'm like, you know, you get, sometimes there's things you got to do for the better good. Sure. Yeah. I was like, sure. All right, let's do this. Um, so got through with basic, um, did my job training, came home, went to my unit. And I, one of the other reasons I joined, cause my dude was like, Hey, this unit has not deployed since, the invasion of Afghanistan and Iraq. <laughs> and I'm like, Oh, it's been 10 years and yet they haven't sent y'all. Yeah. It's like, shoot. That means I'm not going anywhere within two years. 
<laughs> they were like, hey, you guys, guess what? You're you're suiting up. You're going to Afghanistan. I was not happy about that. <laughs> yeah, that's not kind of a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm just a nice, chill kind of person. But I'm a guy who's like, hey, we follow the rules. We do what makes sense. Right. And I was just, I was not happy. Not that like I, I wasn't for or against what we were doing over there. I just didn't want to go overseas. Right, yeah. And it wasn't a year worth of training over there. And being over there, it was supposedly like a, the the latter end. It was oh, like 2012. Okay. Um, so things were cooling off. Right. But still, like it was quiet in some days and then crazy in other days. Mm-hmm. Like I had some friends who were in who were split up from us and they were at a different station and they were doing patrol and they got hit with the bomber. And I was like, we are just here to do what we were asked to do. Mm -hmm. And these people are like, Hey, we don't like that. And so I lost three friends in one day. Wow. And I was like, it takes a lot not to be, I can, I could see the understanding of why people stateside, or in gangs and they get mad when someone of their mm-hmm. friends gets shot and they want to get revenge. But I also, because I, I try and think bigger picture, right. that if you try and get revenge, what does that do? Mm-hmm. An eye for an eye leaves everybody blind. Absolutely. So I took that and I was like, all right, push through, um, came back home and I was like, you know, I'm just going to chill. Mm-hmm. Cause in the national guard, I had, you only did one week in a month. So my right. actual job during the week was a part-time kid at Bath and Body Works, <laughs> which is always the funniest thing to tell people. I didn't realize that it actually overlapped. Yeah. So I worked in the movie theater and at the after school program pretty much overlap. Mm-hmm. And then I left the movie theater and got another gig um, selling DVDs at Movie Stop, mm-hmm. which was like a branch of GameStop. Oh, okay. Which was kind of cool. Yeah. Because when I left, it was the perfect overlap. So I knew all the movies on DVD and mm-hmm. I could tell people about them. And then I was like, you know, Movie Stop didn't work because I had to do my drill training. Right. So then I went to Bath and Body Works. And that was literally because the girl at Bath and Body Works saw me at the movie theater. I was like, you know what? I love your energy. Hmm. And I'm like, I mean... I'm just doing my job. Right. Um, and I went there and I was at Bath and Body Works for a good, it's almost five years, including like the split for deployment. Yeah. And when I was there, we switched management a couple of times. And the last lady, it's like, she was a decent manager, just mm-hmm. not my, for me personally. Sure. And so yet again, I got recruited and they were like, Hey Chris, we like you. <laughs> and that was the lovely team over at Buckle. Yeah. Isn't it amazing how many opportunities you get just like enjoying being where you're at at that moment? Yeah. It's crazy. Just doing the, literally what I think of as like the bare minimum, like showing up to work and just being happy about where <laughs> you are in life at that moment in time will get you so many opportunities. It's not even, you don't have to be really happy. You just have to fake a smile. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Good point. <laughs> but you have to give decent customer service. Yeah. And I think that was the thing that had people asking me to move. Mm -hmm. Um, because I actually was doing what I thought was the bare minimum, but apparently it was above what was expected. Um, cause I've always been one, your, your normal training is like, Hey, ask questions, see Mm -hmm. what people want. And you go from there. And if I, if I see what you want, I'll suggest something, but I've never been a pushy kind of person, right? Um, which is kind of weird. Cause you go to buckle and everybody I talk to when I say I worked at buckle, like, Oh my gosh, (laughs) They're, they're always throwing clothes at me and they, they were just throwing back and forth and just give me these expensive pieces. And I'm like, first off, I totally understand yep. that that's what they train you to do. But me, I figure out who you are. Mm-hmm. And I do that even now at the jewelry stores. Instead of just jumping on you, asking you like questions that make zero sense to you walking straight into a door, mm-hmm. I'm going to let you feel you out. Yeah. And I mean, I've been doing this for almost 15 years. I can feel out people before I ask them a ton of questions. Absolutely. And I think that's another reason why we get along so well is because I'm not like jumping over top. Mm -hmm. um, What some people call a shark, just rushing to take (laughs) all the sales. I'm just a chill personality, Yeah, which you wouldn't expect 
because growing up, like, I think I might have been in class with two other black kids. Mm -hmm. And I think people assume, like, oh, hey, you know, you grew up in a school with all white kids. Whereas you grew up in a school and you said the majority was what? Um, Everything else. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was in a school with um, pretty much every single race, creed, and ideology in it. And um, the majority of my time was in the break dance club, which was all Asians. So. Yeah, n- yeah, I grew up, I, I sat to the side most of my, because I, I was like, you know, if I'm going to be stuck in school, I'm going to get as many extra points as possible. So mm-hmm. I took all honors courses. So there weren't a lot of, of like people of mixed color or creed. It was all the kids who their parents were like, you're going to college. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I really didn't need to go to college. Right. But I figured out the system. And I'm like, the <laughs> system says these courses are going to be about the same. Yeah. Why not just get the extra? And I feel like that's how I am now. I'm like, if everyone's going through life at the same rate, why not just go a little bit further and mm-hmm. people remember who you are? Yeah. Because that's how I ended up at Reed's is the boss came through and was like, hey, you are you seem like a nice guy. You know what you're talking about. You're not mm-hmm. oppressive. Uh, you want to come work? I was like, sure. I mean, I'll, I'll interview. Yeah. Mind you, I took three interviews because I am a horrible person to interview. <laughs> I'm like, I don't, I don't know what to talk about. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, this is almost five years ago, so I was a little bit quieter. Right. If yeah. that's possible. <laughs> but I finally got the gig and... You know, it was just a, a different step yeah. in life. You know, I got out the National Guard. I think I did eight years. Oh, wow. Um, so did you do, uh, you signed two contracts then, right? No. No. So National Guard, because it's uh, oh, less like straight, yeah, you get sense. a longer, um, like the Marines and the Army, from what I know, are like three or four year contracts. Right. National Guard, because you're only doing like weekends and mm-hmm. like the year to a month training which no one tells you they're like oh it's only two weeks a year no it's two weeks a year minimum because i definitely had a couple years where it was three four weeks of training up yeah (laughs) you're like why am i doing this mess i thought it was two weeks a year you got to read the fine lines (laughs) for every contract so i did that for six i think it was six years on two years like just Mm -hmm. if the world goes to war knock on wood uh, <laughs> right yeah you, you get that letter <laughs> but it was nice because i have i've met friends and grown because the national guard is similar to me like going to college okay, you meet yeah. people from all different walks all different points of view just like in basic training all different walks of life mm-hmm. and surprisingly enough basic training for the national guard is just army basic training hmm. i thought i was going to show up and there's going to be like chill national <laughs> right. nope full on basic training with all the people who are going reserves, full active duty oh, national wow. guard. So you meet people from everywhere. Yeah. And then you get here in my unit, national guard technically is served for the state and the, the federal government. So the state comes first. Mm-hmm. Um, so all the people here were pretty much from North Carolina, right? Me from the lovely city of Wilmington chilled down here. I had friends in my unit who were from like the boondocks <laughs> and i was like i didn't realize people drove this far like when i say boonies i mean like the other side of Asheville, and they were uh, driving yeah. and my unit was stationed in winterville which is like a suburb mm-hmm. um, kind of of greenville north carolina sure so still got to hang out with people from ecu and party <laughs> right. um, still got to meet people from all over the and it just gave you a different point of view because I feel like when you go to like everyone goes there for the unit, which is military police. Right. But everyone has a real job mm-hmm. outside of it. So I had police officers. I had kids who were in school. I had firefighters. I had a friend who did road work construction. Right. So to me, it gave me a broader view of the world because mm-hmm. I feel like going to college, you do get that point of view from kids who are from different walks of life. Right. But it's more so they're from a different walk, but their parents did something. Mm-hmm. Whereas the National Guard, I was able to meet people where they actually did something different. I was I was um, glad that we were going to talk about the National Guard today because overall I wanted to talk to you kind of more of a broad term and comparing it to college makes a lot of sense too. Because even though you are getting that kind of quote unquote world view at college, overall, from my experience at college, um, undergrad and graduate degree, 
you're not with a really a broad character of people. Yeah. So for your like gen eds, you might see some people that are a little bit different than you might think a little bit different than you. But as soon as you get into your major, it's pretty much just a bunch of views, just in a bunch of different ways. That have a little, <laughs> you little, a little bit. Font. Yeah, That's what exactly. That's exactly what it is. Yeah, you're right. But with military in general, from what, I've heard and what I've experienced from like other people talking about is there's the different reasons why you were brought there. So you have the guys that show up because they bleed red, white, and blue, and they're going to fight until the death (laughs) for their country. You have people that showed up there because they're like, I don't know what to do with my life. I'll give this a shot. And then you have people that show up and they're like, I'm dead ass broke. They're going to pay me to go and put my life on the line. I don't care if my life's on the line or not. Yeah. So like, if you want to talk about a full broad range of people, that's probably where you're going to find them. And that's what it was interesting. Cause when I went to basic training, that's exactly what you saw. Mm. Like you had people who went and you knew they were going active duty because you listened to them. And they're like, I don't have anything at home. Mm-hmm. Like I don't have a job. I'm just, I needed something to do. And right. It gives you a purpose. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's always nice to have a purpose in life, whether it be someone telling you what that purpose should be, or yeah. if you can figure out what it is yourself. Me personally, I would like to figure it out myself. <laughs> right. Because going through at this age, I'm like, you know, the people who are telling us what to do have their own agenda, mm-hmm. whether it be, you know, for financial gain or political gain, everybody has their own agenda. Yep. And I'd much rather be working on my own. True. Yeah. Uh, which is why I finally hit the point where I'm like, you know, let's, let's branch out. Let's, let's try and do things that will better help myself and my family mm-hmm. in the future. You know, the rock, I always see this meme. I'm not even sure if he actually says it, but I see this quote thing all right. the time. It's like, if you go to work every day and work eight hours a day for somebody else and you come home and you don't do anything for yourself, mm-hmm. why is that? Like you should always be doing something to better yourself. True. Whether it be reading a book, like when you did 75 hard yeah. or, you know, watching videos. Cause I know everyone learns things differently. Mm-hmm. Me personally, I can take in, typically I can watch a video and read something and be like, okay, I know what this is. Yeah. I know some people who are like, you have to tell me straight to my face <laughs> exactly what this is. We're going to ask questions for about 10 minutes. I'm going to forget. And then I ask you more questions <laughs> right. and that's how I learn. And there's other people who literally just like, I read all this. All right, I'm good to go. Mm-hmm. But you have to do something, I think, to better yourself at all times. And that's, I mean, that's where I'm at at work too, is mm-hmm. I have these people. I work with fun people all the time. Oh, yeah. Customers, associates. But me personally, I learn things super quick. Mm-hmm. So I'll do, everyone looks at me weird because I'll, I'll, I'll hit my quota at the store. And then I'll be like, all right, here you go. You guys have made your budget. Go ahead. And I'll sit back and I'll do training so I can learn more stuff to better educate myself. And it's always for like just to know different things. So it's either about watches because I like watches and I think I think it's intriguing or it's about jewelry to better present things. But I, I feel like people don't take the effort nowadays to actually better themselves, to become a better person, either be a salesperson or just a person in general. People are just like, oh, hey, it's given to me. No one walked in the door today, so I didn't make any sale. Well, did you call anybody? Did you reach out? Did you do anything? Like at the store, those are things that you would do. Yeah. If I'm at home and I'm like, what'd you do today? Nothing. Why didn't you like watch a video mm-hmm. and take that information and learn something new? Whether it be like, I like watching random videos about video games like just to know the broad spectrum about like what's yeah. going on or tech, uh, new phones come out. I watch mm-hmm. MKBHD <laughs> on a weekly yeah. basis just cause I'm like, I like his delivery yeah. uh, of information. But I feel like you should always be watching something to further yourself. It's, it's interesting. You bring that up too. Uh, there was, uh, one of the girls I went to high school with actually messaged me today about 75 hard. Mm hmm. And it's very similar to what you were just saying there. And her question was, I want to do this, but I feel like I don't have enough time. And if I did do this, I feel like I won't have any time for myself. And 
I completely understood where she was coming from because I thought the same thing before I started to. And very similar to what you just said is there's so much of that downtime where you think, what did I actually do today? Yeah. And really, it's just that nothing. And it's finding that time to start working and doing something for yourself during that time with, with 75 hard, at least in, um, for me anyway, is when you find that time, you get that back. That's time that you had wasted that you are actually getting back. And that's the only time in life that you will gain time. Yeah. Where you're, you're actually stopping and doing something for yourself. Cause you, everyone assumes they're like, well, I don't have enough time. Like I have to mm-hmm. drive to work. You know, that requires me. I'm like, yes, there are 24 hours in a day. Do I think everybody needs to do the wake up at 5 a.m., do the grind mm-hmm. until 9, only get four hours of sleep? No. No. Yeah. But if you're telling me that you go to work at 9 and you work till 5 and you have a 45-minute drive back and forth, mm-hmm. you don't have any time to do anything? No. Wake up a little bit earlier. Yeah. That, see the sunrise. And if you do that, then that means you're up. You can meditate. Mm -hmm. um, You can read a book. You can go work out. And I mean, I know plenty of people who don't want to work out, but at least sitting down and doing a meditation, centering yourself is definitely a good way to start your day. I started that younger because like you would always Mm -hmm. wake up and you're like, hey, you know, you should do a prayer in the morning or before you go to sleep. Uh, And some people don't pray, um, but prayer to me is kind of like a form of meditation. Absolutely. Yeah. Like you should clear your mind figure out what you want to do and push forward. Sure. Absolutely. And I wanted to actually circle back real quick too, because we kind of, we glossed over it a little bit, but I think it's an important topic to talk about is, um, kind of back to the national guard a little bit, Mm -hmm. but more so than that about the different people that you met. One of my good friends, the one thing that he talks about the most is his battle buddy. Yeah. And how his battle buddy was nothing like him at all. Just happened to got paired with him. It was like, here you go. Good (laughs) luck. Have fun. But um, they're still best friends to this day out of nowhere. And um, I kind of wanted you to talk about a little bit how you have those people from so many different backgrounds. So you have, there's probably battle buddies and just people that work in the same unit just in general that believe in God or an atheist. So you have one person that believes they're the other is going to her ter- eternal hell. Yeah. Or you have the other one that thinks they're a complete loon for believing mm-hmm. that there's someone up in the sky. So I guess the main question is how did you see everyone come together and what made them work well together? Because I think that's something that not just even America, but just like the world needs right now. Yeah. So Yes, the battle buddy system. I totally forgot about that. <laughs> uh, pretty much, it's set up that you are supposed to know where somebody is at all times, mm-hmm. and whether it be like out in the field or if you're like in a contained facility, mm-hmm. you should know where that person is. And mm-hmm. when you're on your downtime, you guys are hanging out, and talking sometimes. And I think surprisingly enough, if more people did that in the real world, it would help them out. Mm -hmm. Uh, I know when I was younger, we had accountability partners and that's really what it is. Right. Um, but as an accountability partner, typically you guys have the same point of view Mm -hmm. and you guys are like, Hey, you know, you're pretty much seeing the same thing, but as battle buddies, you guys, like you said, different points. Right. And the way you guys all get on the same thing is someone says you have to go do this together. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, you're getting punished. (laughs) I stayed under the radar as much as possible, but we had these two kids. I say kids. I mean, they were in late twenties. Right. Uh, Well, one was in the late twenties. One was early, like 23. Mm -hmm. And they didn't agree on something. And what did the drill sergeant do? First off, he said, look, y'all can't get along. I'm going to make you get along. (laughs) And those two literally were stuck together for the next uh, 24 hours. Yeah. Uh, Literally couldn't go more than six feet apart from each other. (laughs) And it was only six feet because when you're marching in formation, Uh, that's how much space you might need potentially, like you were turning or anything. Mm -hmm. And I kid you not, they were tied at the hips. (laughs) And you're like, that's so stupid. I'm like, yes, it is stupid. But 
it forces you to sit next to somebody and get to learn like what's their point of view. Mm -hmm. But you have to understand, I don't care what you believe in. This is our main goal. Right. And I feel like nowadays everyone doesn't have the same goal in life anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, whether it be for business, for the government, um, for yourself personally, no one has the same point of view, but our goal should always be forwarding the knowledge or for making forward progress for the society. Right. And I get that. I mean, me personally, just my thought or from like reading books that I have, is like, if everyone works together, you can always make forward mm -hmm. progress. And that's what it was as a battle buddy is you, your goal was to make forward progress yeah, to move towards an objective and finish it, whether it be finish basic training, finish the day out. And I always do things in like small to big to small. So like basic training the day, get through the, the mm -hmm. hour. Uh, but you have to work and figure out exactly what needs to be done. I'm glad you bring that up too, because on the outside looking in, even just us two, right? Is it looks like a weird kind of combination. Why would these two guys be hanging out together so much? Why would these guys start a podcast together? But I think if you use the battle buddy system, the one thing that we do have in common is that moving forward. The yeah. one thing we both want to do is do better. The one thing that we both want to learn is how can we do better learning about others and what questions can we ask? And I think that's the one thing that can really take anyone from the most opposite ends of the spectrum. I, we, we're not really opposite ends of the spectrum <laughs> by any means, but, um, but I, even from that like radical aspect, I think just the thought of moving together and moving forward and wanting to learn is truly, um, something that could bring people together. It's kind of what you were saying there too. It's just yeah. the, thought of being together with someone that whether you want to be with them or not like those two guys <laughs> that you were talking about and just learning about them makes a huge difference. Yeah. I mean, like you said, all, we work so well because we're opposites. Mm -hmm. We're not polar opposites. Right. Um, cause I, I know there are people who are polar opposites and those people will never get along Absolutely. because their, their mindset is so drastically different, mm -hmm. but we are opposite in, different things like where we grew up mm -hmm. and how we got to the same point. Yeah. But knowing that we got to a point that has something in common gives us that point that we can touch and we can then work together to go to the next point, Absolutely. whether it be the same spot for both of us or it's different mm -hmm. positions. But I like, I love working with you and just knowing that your perspective is different from mine, Yeah. but at least we understand that we're still human beings and that it's not me jumping down your throat and be like, you're a hundred percent wrong. Mm -hmm. No, there's very few times in the world where someone's a hundred percent wrong. Yeah. Uh, but everyone still has to understand that differences. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I see it all the time and I think that's what makes life fun is finding people that do have that difference. I mean, how boring would it be? And that was another reason why that us working together makes so much sense. How boring would this podcast be if we all both just <laughs> said the same thing all the time and had the same experience and had the same viewpoint? It wouldn't make any sense. Gosh, that would be so sad if we were both like the same guys. I mean, I see podcasts all the time where people, you look at them and you're like, you guys literally mm -hmm. are just a different font of each other. <laughs> yeah. So of course, you have the same points of view. But I think some of the best podcast and just conversations come from people like we've talked to before who mm -hmm. all have different points of view. Uh, yeah. And I think, um, kind of what we talked about, we went to a bar before this, just full disclosure. <laughs> and while we were there, we were talking about like how, do, cause we had Brittany on a few weeks ago and what we were talking about, like, how do we niche this down? And it's kind of what you were just saying. It's having that same person, the same font say the same thing. But I don't think that's what we're trying to accomplish here. We're looking for completely different characters to come in and learn from that. So I'm not sure having that super niche down, we're going to talk about this type of, um, th what you were saying earlier, this type of video game yeah. and make sense for us. And I think that's why this podcast worked for both of us. I, th I agree. Having that just different points of view is going to be nice. 
to bring it bring it around. Uh, whether it be we interview everybody and get them and know their point of view on a specific question or just talking to them will give us broader spectrum Mm -hmm. of knowledge for when we start talking about other things. I want to change up just a little bit and um, ask you, we were talking earlier and it made me think of a good question for you Mm -hmm. talking about how you said, um, I don't think I found my career yet. So to take it to a more existential question, even beyond that question by itself, where do you see yourself going? And not only where do you see yourself going, but how do you think that plays a role in what you do now just as a human about finding your career? Because I know many people out there haven't found themselves yet. I haven't found myself yet. And I feel like I found my career. So what would you say to those people and what kind of keeps you keeping on? (laughs) That's a great question. I haven't, when I think of career, I think of something that someone's going to do for 20, 30 years. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing, whether it changed a little bit or a lot, but you're doing the same thing. So technically I feel like retail would be my career, right? But I think everyone should try something different. I have a friend um, who we'll hopefully talk to soon who works and goes to work and then manages and takes care of people. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that is her career. She's a career manager. Yeah. Whether it be at one job or another, but her personality is meant to grow people. And are we giving a low key shout out to Caitlin? Yeah. Sweet. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So even if it's at different companies, she's always growing people. I think in the back of my mind, I I don't know where I'll end up, but I know I want to help people find the thing that they didn't know they were looking for. Yeah. Whether it be in retail, which is like clothing or in jewelry, because typically people come in, they're like, oh, hey, you know, I'm looking for this. Mm Mm-hmm. And I show them something that's along those lines, but also show them something different. Yeah. And then helping everyone find what they come in looking for. Uh, and if I don't have it in the store, I'm going to pull a Miracle on 34th Street <laughs> and be like, well, we don't have it here, but it's across the street yeah. or down the, down the road. And I feel like doing that builds better relationships. Absolutely. I, I want to interrupt you just yeah. for a second mm-hmm. because... Um, just knowing you and knowing what you've done for um, people and at least reads, I think you do that beyond the product. I think you do that for the new people coming in, kind of helping them see where they're at now and kind of help them see where they want to go. Cause, um, even for me, and I'm sure even Brittany, who we talked to previously would say the same thing too. I think you're doing it way beyond jewelry. I mean, I don't think if you come in and I'm working with you and we're talking about life, which I typically keep to myself, Mm -hmm. but I, I can ask questions and ascertain things that if this is not for you, I'm going to be in your corner a thousand percent rooting you on to do something different. Yeah. So whether it be leaving retail and moving to the finance sector (laughs) or going into clothing or leaving and going into real estate, I am a hundred percent there to ask the questions in the downtime yeah, (laughs) to try and ask you like, why are you here? What's going to push you? What do you really want to do? Yeah. We are starting to get close to our time here too, but I haven't been enjoying asking this question. So hopefully you've been thinking about (laughs) it before I asked (laughs) if you were to give your younger self any advice or to tell them something that you have learned now that they should know what would you tell your younger self? (laughs) So there's two things I would say, depending on the time. So one would be research finance. Mm -hmm. And that's mostly because I remember as a a young buck, I got out of basic. I was like, I'm gonna buy a car and I put so much money down and then I still owed a lot of money. Um, so just research finance, just better understand what's going on around you before you just invest a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And two is, don't be so serious. Yeah. I like that one. It, it goes along with Palmer's um, <laughs> very well too. And 
I'm glad that you say it as well, because when Palmer said it, we were running out of time. We have more time now, so we can talk about it. Is um, that's, that's how I took my life, was way too serious. Up until a certain point, I was like, you know what? You have this one life to live. Why are you going to let other people tell you what to do? Why, why does it have to be this straight and narrow? Honestly, it, almost, it brings it back to everyone we've talked to so far. It's yeah. almost kind of the um, kind of tying factor from everyone we've talked to is why take life so serious? I mean, you only have one life um, unless you believe in reincarnation. But for real, I mean, this life that you have, you should be living it for yourself. Mm-hmm. What And you just need to, and that's the problem is nowadays going to school is everyone says, this is the point of view. This is where you need to go. Mm-hmm. Like you need to go to college. And if you don't know if you're going to college, like you need to go this. I'm like, I mean, these kids are just mm-hmm. kids. They don't know what they want to do. Yeah. I have friends in Europe and they're in school for 13 years. Yeah. And they, they have the opportunity to travel and learn and they're not, but they ask them, which I think is weird in like what we consider middle school. Mm-hmm. What do you think you want to do? Do you want to go into the professional route and be like a doctor or a lawyer? Or do you want to do a trades route? Yeah. And they actually invest in those kids. Mm-hmm. Like they let them learn. They do internships. And they can actually be a foot ahead. Whereas you come here Certainly. and they're like, oh, hey, you know, you want to go to trade school? <laughs> um, um, Well, you can do this shop class and build this one house on the yeah. back of the building because the school needs it. <laughs> I'm like, I don't, I don't need to build that house. Mm-hmm. It'd be better off if you allowed me to do an internship for a construction guy. Yeah. Do I want to do this? Do I want to be an engineer? Do I want to be a brick mason? So many things that we'd be doing to further people. Mm, Right. And really, um, to that point, undergrad is almost just an additional four years of (laughs) high school. (laughs) So you're, you're looking at in the U S you're looking at 16 years of just learning to learn when, (sighs) um, kind of what you were saying with Europe is like, let's start, building your passion you don't have to find what your career is going to be at 12 obviously yeah but i know most um 12 year olds my nephew like he has a passion and if you could have a teacher or a school or a curriculum that said hey you know what let's take this passion and let's start to grow it i i think that would help most people these days it'd be nice if like each county because i know new Hanover county does a little what i consider normal but it'd be cool if you had a school dedicated to what passions are like Mm -hmm. this school is the kids who are going to college. Yeah. Like these kids typically do a different course. Like these kids are the athletes. Like they just want to play football or they want to play basketball Mm -hmm. and this school. Yes. They're going to play each other in sports, but this school is made for the kids who are, they just want to play basketball for fun. But in reality, their goal is to, get a job. They want to do HVAC. They want to do plumbing. They want to do something that's not college driven. Right. And I think that would better focus America reality. If we had, if we had high school trade schools, Mm -hmm. I know it's weird. When I moved down here, so there was, there was no saying such thing as like an early college in PA or at least where I grew up and coming down here, they were like, Oh look, if you take these like, extra classes you'll have two years of college like you'll have an associate's degree right out and you'll only have to do two years of college at whatever college you want to go to yep. like that's all fine and dandy and everything but what about the kids that don't want to be in school now yeah like you could help them with their trade now so they could leave high school with a trade under their belt they could know plumbing they can know like ele- be an electrician brunswick county um Community college is dying for people to learn how to do electrical work on the electrical cords. Like you could have the people that don't want to be in school getting out of school with a good ass job. (laughs) I feel like the reason they don't do that is someone would sue them. That's a good point too. (laughs) That's what happens nowadays. You know, let's have a 16 year old learn how to ride along these these (laughs) these power power lines. lines. Yeah. They're like, yeah, we don't want to get sued. Well, no, if you, if you did the proper technique mm-hmm. and you train the kids the right way, then by the time they're, you have them up right. doing stuff, they're going to be prepared. Yep. 
Well, I think we are at a good time now. Thanks for telling us a little bit more about your life and your story here, Chris. It was good to kind of do a little bit of a deeper dive on you and kind of see where you're coming from and know a little bit more about the co-host behind the podcast. (laughs) I'm glad I was here. You had to come regardless. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Yeah, true. (laughs) For everyone listening, we really appreciate your support. Continue listening to us. Share with a friend. Share on your social medias. We are now on absolutely everything from Spotify to Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, everywhere that you can find a podcast. That's where we're at. Best way to support us is um, just listening, like us, follow, all of that fun stuff. And we will see you on the next one. Have a good one. Cheers. Cheers.